Welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. I don't know, man. So so many things are so weird right now, you know. The, this is the weekend that I'm recording this, and you're not going to see it for several days, so the little bits of things that are running through my head are not going to matter by the time you actually see this. But, you know, I woke up this morning, and there's a congresswoman, um, Maxine Waters, who represents some district in California who's currently over doing the protests in Brooklyn Square for the Chauvin trial, demanding a guilty murder verdict or else, saying that people need to uh, get more violent on the streets. She didn't use the word violence. She said more aggressive, more active, you know. Um, make people more uncomfortable. She's advocating violence. We have, you know, for all of the talk about insurrection, you know, people people love to use that word now. It's become the boogeyman word, you know. You've got the white supremacist MAGA insurrectionists. Um, that's actual insurrection. That's, that's what, that we have sitting members of Congress advocating actual insurrection and they have been for years you know that started in, in late 2016 this isn't exactly new and okay you know I'm all for the the First Amendment but I'm also for a little bit of equal treatment under the law um, you know if, if you're if you're going to call people claiming that Biden is illegitimate um, insurrection or advocating violence or leading to violence and those people need to be removed from public discourse then well you've got Maxine Waters you know equal treatment would be a nice a nice change although I don't believe that in either case you're dealing with something that people shouldn't be allowed to say really entertaining. You know, um, someone posted about a study that shows that conservative conservatives overall are happier than liberals. And it's kind of interesting because one, the conservative and liberal definitions have changed a lot. Okay. Conservative means values of liberal democracy. Okay. Someone who wants freedom of speech, freedom of travel, freedom of association is a conservative, okay? That's, you know, you know these are, these are values that the liberals would have claimed 20, 30 years ago. Um, so that's very, very interesting to me. The, the, the definitions are a little wonky, but, <clears throat> you know, conservative women are happiest. Conservative men are next. Cons uh, liberal women are third, and then liberal men are the most unhappy. And, you know, there's a lot of discussion about this. What does this mean? Well, it's because liberals care about things that are outside of themselves that they can't control, but conservatives care about things that are close to home. And I'm like, yeah, there's a point to that, but I think that the word care is being used in two different ways here and that they're not necessarily compatible you know I'm not trying to be mean but I don't think the words are being used I don't think the word is being used to mean the same thing in both cases I'm gonna probably have to drop some examples on you of what I mean but I want to keep the video relatively short to care about something that is local that you know, to care about your family generally means to care for, to influence, to do things. Um, you know, the, the idea being that you are involved, okay? And this gets back to the fear study. And to care about global warming is really, literally, just a fear response. And that's pretty. That's a pretty significant difference. Okay, we're talking about the concern versus caring for. That's a big difference. I'd like to point that out as probably the biggest thing that's going on with this. 
someone else put out a contrary report. So this, this report was based on self-reporting of a large data set. Um, there's always problems with epidemiological science and the idea of self-reporting. But this, you know, this has been cross-referenced with socioeconomic factors, race, and psychologists got involved and verified the results, okay, based on other factors in the study. And I'm pretty comfortable with that, okay? Psychologists do actually have the ability to do that. So this guy, um, in a response to that, said that it's obviously not true because here's this other study that shows that conservatives display fewer happy behaviors in Congress on film and by voting record. And that's... So, that's sketchy. I'm going to tell you that... Well, I'm not trying... Again, I'm not trying to, to pick on anyone in particular. But this is one where I'm going to say it's pretty sketchy. Because he's comparing a different type of data, a different set of data, and then trying to apply the meanings. The conservatives are less happy than liberals because of a political label or a political ideology in Congress. And that's obviously a completely different thing. So I did, I did read that study, and I find it very entertaining and very enlightening. But um, its own data doesn't actually support the headline, the use. Um, and it's not, it's, it's not an apples-to-apples apples comparison. It's, it's quite literally a comparison of um, theatrics in Congress. And that's very different. So I'm going to leave you with that one. The fear study, remember that there was a fear study that showed that conservatives had more developed amygdala responses versus liberals. And, they, you, know, you know, there's this thing, it means conservatives are more fearful. No, it doesn't. It means conservatives respond to fear, process fear, and um, act on fear their fear. Acting on fear doesn't mean fear-based reaction. It means acting on the fact that there is something there. Something that triggers your amygdala. Fear response. Um, if, you, if you confront it, if you overcome it, that is still an amygdala response. It's a fear response. It's a response to fear. The fact is conservatives in general tend to have a better ability to process fear. That's important and doesn't mean what the, I mean, you know, people are trying to push these things as, as ideological um, weapons. You know, we have the church of science and we have, you know, this finger bone of the saint is this study and this toe bone of this saint is this study and my toe bone is well holier than your finger bone and all that bullshit. You know, this is a religious war and I don't particularly, um, identify in these camps, you know, I don't, I don't really have a bone to pick, except that I'll look at people doing things, people living lives, and yeah, there's a pretty, there's a pretty stark divide there, okay, there are some extremely happy, self-fulfilled, enlightened, self-actualized people out there who would qualify as liberal. Um, there are some who would qualify as, as conservative. When it, once you bring it down, you bring it down to just people living their lives and action and activity, I, I kind of, you know, if I want to go have a good time, I'm probably going to pick the conservatives. If I want to go out in the desert and get something done, go four-wheeling, um, go hiking, probably going to pick the conservatives. You know, it's not that the people... They're not going to be extreme caricatures of conservatism, like whatever Christian church ladies in white dresses trying to hike through the desert. It's, it's not what I mean. But the conservative values 
are going to tend to be there. And that doesn't mean liberals aren't going to be there. I mean, hurting hippies is, is, is a classic thing for a conservative veteran who's interested in, you know, arts, music, hiking, whatever to do. But, oh man, I, I, th there's a lot of experiential feel, feel to this one. And it, a lot of it does have to do with the veterans community. Um, I'll, I'll freely admit that there's a bias there. Um, anyway, it, it was an interesting study, and we have active, active congressional advocacy of insurrection. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's definitely going to be an adventure. Um, you know, tell me when the war kicks off. Stay sideways. <laughs>